Here's to the ones who dream. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down the top five facts about La La Land that you should know. Here's to the ones who dream. Number five. This will be the third movie with Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. It's pretty strange that we keep running into each other. Maybe it means something. I doubt it. Yeah. Gosling and Stone previously starred opposite each other in the romantic comedy Crazy Stupid Love and the action thriller Gangster Squad. Are you weak in the knees yet? Sure I am. And La La Land will mark their third. In an Entertainment Weekly interview, director Damien Chazelle described the two as the closest thing we have right now to an old Hollywood couple. When we were casting up the movie, part of the appeal to me was that you know Ryan and Emma, they're going to be a couple. You can see them and imagine them together. It was like Fred and Ginger or Bogart and Bacall, a classic Hollywood screen couple. Gosling and Stone weren't the only possibilities, however. Miles Teller and Emma Watson were originally set to star. After Teller was dropped from the project, Gosling became Chazelle's new leading man. Meanwhile, Watson had to step down in order to play Belle in the live-action Beauty and the Beast. Chazelle met Stone while she was starring in the 2014 revival of Cabaret, and cast Stone partly based on her Broadway experience. You have two actors who have an on-screen chemistry that I think is one for the ages. Number 4. The film's title has a double meaning. This modern musical takes place against the fantastic backdrop of Los Angeles, which is also known as La La Land. The movie's title isn't just a reference to LA's nickname, though. Merriam Webster Dictionary defines La La Land as a euphoric, dreamlike mental state detached from the harsher realities of life. This makes the title especially fitting, as the film encompasses both the magic of movies and the brutal nature of show business. Two options. You either follow my rules or follow my rules. Capiche? Thank you. I can do it a different way. Oh, that's, that's fine. Thank you very much. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Chazelle stated the idea was to take the old musical but ground it in real life where things don't always exactly work out. I wanted to really try to highlight the just what they go through, you know, yeah. um, uh, trying to get apart. It's not easy. At the same time, Chazelle wanted to pay tribute to the ones who dream as foolish as they may seem. Here's to the ones who dream. As they may see. Number 3. The film was shot using Cinemascope. Lately you've begun to imagine it's Cinemascope. La La Land is a love letter to Singing in the Rain, The Bandwagon, and 1950s movie musicals. It's amazing to be here scoring La La Land on the same stage where they scored Singing in the Rain and all those great MGM musicals. In order to give his picture a genuine old-fashioned look and feel, Chazelle decided to film in glorious Cinemascope. For those that don't know, this lens system was primarily used for filming widescreen movies from 1953 to 1967. Chazelle additionally strived to shoot many scenes in single takes, paying homage to the works of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. It wasn't about sort of showing off uh, technically, it was more about trying to create an environment where this stuff was just unfolding. Sure. So you didn't really get the sense of like, uh, okay, here's real life and here's the musical number and here's real life again. The ambitious director was also influenced by the 1964 French-German musical The Umbrellas of Cherbourg, and especially the jazzy 1967 The Young Girls of Rochefort. The result is a film with very contemporary characters and themes, but with the atmosphere of a musical from Hollywood's golden age. Every cast member was infected by this idea that you could reimagine these great old movies. Number two, the film stars had to brush up on multiple skills. The training of Ryan and Emma was a whole nother beast, you know, because it's not only are you choreographing a film, you're going to train the main actors how to dance. Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling are two of the most versatile performers in the business right now, but even they needed to learn a few new skills for La La Land. Stone previously studied ballet and palm dancing during her youth, although she had to pick up ballroom and tap dancing for this role. We did lots of preparation with Mandy Moore, learning to tap dance and learn jazz and ballroom. Gosling not only learned how to tap dance, but also mastered playing the piano. Ironically, co-star John Legend is a professionally trained pianist. Ryan and John joked that it was all part of my master plan to cast John Legend, but deprive him of his normal instrument and give that one to Ryan. Since Gosling's character mainly plays the piano, however, Legend had to familiarize himself with the guitar. I had to learn playing guitar for the film and 
just trying to make sure I felt confident and comfortable. By the end of the film's production, Legend was actually a little jealous of Gosling's newfound piano playing skills. Coming from a Grammy and Oscar winning songwriter, that's high praise. And I was kind of jealous about how fast he learned to be awesome at piano. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, the film had a rough start. This movie took a long time from writing to finally getting on the screen. and. Um, but the whole time, I mean, what you said, I, I, I sort of, I knew for sure that it would live or die based on the chemistry between these two characters, between me and Sebastian. One of the major themes in La La Land is that nobody's dreams come true overnight. This film's bumpy start is a testament to that. Chazelle actually conceived the script in 2010, but no studio was willing to invest in an original movie musical. How are you going to be a revolutionary if you're such a traditionalist? You're holding on to the past, but jazz is about the future. With assistance from producers Fred Berger and Jordan Horowitz, the script eventually made it to focus features with a $1 million budget. The studio insisted on several changes, compromising Chazelle's vision. Putting La La Land on the shelf, Chazelle wrote and directed the indie hit Whiplash, which went on to win three Academy Awards. Now that Chazelle had the industry's attention, Summit Entertainment decided to take a chance on his longtime passion project. Talk about a true Hollywood success story. Maybe I'm not good enough. Yes, you are. Maybe I'm not. It's like a pipe dream. This is the dream. It's conflict and it's compromise. It's very, very exciting. So do you think we have a Best Picture winner on our hands? What La La Land fact do you find the most surprising? For more dreamy top tens and toe-tapping top fives published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo.